Good morning, it's Jubal Kane again. Today I'd like to turn our attention to uh, some basics on the Bridgeport Mill. and I'm just going to talk about vices and uh, other work holding uh, methods that you might use on, on a Bridgeport or any kind of mill for that matter. First of all, let's cover vices. This is pretty basic stuff, but uh, a, a vice is absolutely mandatory. And uh, I like this particular one here. It was made by Bridgeport. And it's a 5 inch. I like that because it's uh, it's still heavy, but not so heavy that I can't take it on and off by myself. And it's got the swivel base on it, so you can adjust that to any angle that you want. Or bring it clear around in this direction. And if a fellow doesn't want the extra weight, you can remove the uh, vise from the swivel base. That reduces the weight by about a third, and then it's easier to move around. Now we got keys on the bottom of uh, the base that hold it in alignment with the T-slots. The keys can be taken off of the base and put on uh, to the vise if you're not going to use that swivel base. And they can be put on there in two directions, either uh, set up for the long way like this on the x-axis or in this direction which is uh, the way we most often use it. That's a nice vise. Another thing I like about this vise it has a hand hold right here so when you do have to lift it up you got something to hang on to. And make sure that you have a, a nice crank uh, wrench for it. Those are handy. Never strike them with a steel hammer always with a lead or brass. Now I've complained a little bit about how heavy these vices are but if they aren't heavy, they really aren't going to be any good because the uh, mass of cast iron is what absorbs all the vibration and uh, uh, makes it a usable vise. Here's a big heavy vise. This is a Dayton 6 inch wide jaws and I actually never have used this. It does not have a swivel base but this is a tilting vise. That is we can loosen up these bolts here and the entire vise will tilt up. There's a little protractor right here and you can set that at any angle you want. You've probably seen a lot of drill press vices made that way but this is a, a milling vise. Uh, I, I don't believe I've ever used this one. It takes two men and two boys to move it. Another quick comment about this vise and I know the Palmgrens were made that way too where they have the open screw and chips get down in there and play havoc. So that's not real good design as compared to this genuine Bridgeport vise where uh, we do of course have a screw back here that's exposed but there's nothing exposed inside of the jaws itself. So that's, I guess that's the other reason that's my uh, one of my favorite vices, this little five-incher. Also it's got the, uh, most of these vices have a coolant trough here so if you're using coolant and a lot of oil it directs it away uh, from dripping on the floor and back into the, uh, the, the T-slots here where it will get back into the pump. Now when you're setting up work in the vise, often uh, the, the work is below the uh, uh, top of the jaw, so we have to set it up on parallel. So I'm going to cover parallels in just a moment here. But if it is small work such as this, and we're going to hold it in a manner similar to this, uh, don't hold it way out to the edge. Put it right in uh, the middle where you're in line with the screw. Otherwise the jaws may cock just a little bit or you might even damage the vise if you over tighten it. So uh, don't hang it over on the edge. Let's get it right in the middle. Or the other thing is if you've got two pieces you could hold it here and then if you have another piece of the equal uh, width or thickness lay it on the other end the same as you would do in a bandsaw vise to keep it from springing or cocking. I don't think it's possible to have too many parallels and they come in pairs and if they're commercially made they're going to be hardened and ground. This is a, a one inch uh, wide which is a pretty handy size. But here's a whole set of them or it was a whole set. There's inch and a half and then some thinner ones that are, that are about inch and a quarter and then the other ones are laying around the shop here someplace. I don't always get them all back into the box. I tend to keep my favorite ones out and on the machine. Here's another pair and uh, that's a nice uh, set of parallels also. I think they're about an inch and a quarter. 
And the purpose of the parallels, I'm just going to have to let that phone ring. I don't know if you can hear it, but if it's important, they'll call back. If they don't call back, it wasn't important. Don't feel you have to answer a phone, man. Men. The purpose of the parallels is to bring the work up in the vise to uh, a working height and for it to remain parallel with the uh, table on the milling machine. So sometimes we raise the work up on parallels and then we clamp it down. And when you do that, tighten up the screw and then you should also tap the work down. Sometimes you will want to remove the parallel so they can be slid out if you don't want them in there if you're going to drill all the way through so you don't damage the parallels. I have another set here. Well, I have a lot of loose ones. This is a set of wavy parallels made in Switzerland. These are particularly handy when you're holding real thin work in the vise, work that is thinner than your parallels. And you can uh, use these in pairs. Here's what I mean by wavy. You can use them in pairs, or if the work is real thin, you can use just one of them. And uh, the, I'm going to set this up so you can see why we would want to use one of them and what, what their real advantage is. Let's say, for instance, we were going to perform some operation, and uh, this is a 316 square stock, and we wanted this to uh, be even with the top of the vise or uh, a little bit above the vise. If we take uh, a wavy parallel, and this is a 1 and 3 eighths wavy parallel, and we put that in the vise, and we lay that uh, work on top of it, then as I tighten this, as so, now I would tighten a little bit more than that before I would drill or anything on, then I could remove the parallel if I wanted, but right now that parallel is being uh, uh, collapsed slightly. And uh, the, the, if you don't have parallels that are thin enough, sometimes the parallel is the thing that is tight and the work is loose. So that's the beauty of these wavy parallels. There are times when I'm doing something on the milling machine that is very crude work. It's uh, almost blacksmith work, but I like to do some of the drilling on here, and, uh, and, and it doesn't matter uh, how accurately I'm holding it. So this is a piece of angle iron. It's heavy duty. Uh, oh, shoot, it's, it's half inch thick angle iron. And uh, now I know that angle iron isn't truly 90 degrees, but when you're doing rough work, sometimes it doesn't matter. That's probably 88 degrees or whatever it was when it came out of the rolling mill. But if I were to, to do some operation on this, for instance, I would use these big vice grips, and I got a pair of those. These are really neat if you don't have a, if you've never seen these. And I hold them like, clamp it down like that, and then I got another one that would go over on the other side. You really need two of them because you will get a lot of vibration and uh, these, these could work loose so they need to be pretty tight. But that's real handy uh, method that my brother showed me uh, using angle iron. The thicker the angle iron the better. Another similar method to what I just showed you is to take a piece of a rectangular or square tubing that can be clamped in the vise and then uh, work also held onto this using uh, the same method. Now C-clamps don't work because uh, first of all C-clamps can vibrate loose and secondly the C-clamps will stick up and interfere with the spindle or the cutting tool. And I know what you're thinking, I don't ever need to do that, that's stupid. Well sometimes you run into a, a, a work piece that is highly irregular. Uh, uh, let's, let's say that it was a, a hammer uh, on a gun and uh, there just isn't any good way to hold it in a vise that's when this might come in handy. V-blocks can be used in the vise as well. If we're holding uh, some round work and it's rather short like that, it can just be put into the V-block and tightened up and you're, you're best off always tightening it up against the fixed jaw rather than the movable jaw. could also be used in the horizontal position. such as that. If the work is real long, you can use uh, two V-blocks, one here and then one here, as long as they're matched V-blocks, of course, from a set. Angle plates are handy accessories, and I have an abundance of them. I don't even know where they all came from, but uh, there's a particularly heavy one. Must be about an inch and a quarter th thick here. I think that was part of a fixture. 
but uh, work can be clamped or bolted onto these and then an operation be, uh, can be performed. Remember what you can do on this milling machine is pretty well uh, unlimited, it's just up to your imagination. A lot of the V-block, or angle plates rather, have uh, slots in them or holes that would allow you to bolt uh, with clamps or directly bolt your work onto them. C-clamps, uh, they might work depending on how uh, hard you're going to mill. Now, and here's some different sizes and then I've got several of these real small ones which are handy little devils. All cast iron. Here's one that I have and never have used it. This is an adjustable angle plate. You can change the angle on it by loosening up these bolts and then there's a there's no, uh, yeah, there is a little protractor right here. Probably not showing up on the camera. But that can, uh, can be set to any angle uh, less than 90. And you can also set it up with a protractor if you don't trust this little built-in protractor. Probably an awful lot of other angle plates that are that are made. You can see them in the catalogs, and I've got a bunch of other ones here. I didn't feel like digging out for this demonstration, but the angle plates, of course, have to be clamped to the uh, milling machine table, and they can be uh, directly bolted, or they can be uh, held on by all of the other uh, work holding clamps. And I'm going to show you some of those here in a few moments.